Nearly 14 million American men have a condition called BPH, or benign prostate hyperplasia, which is more commonly referred to as an enlarged prostate gland. In this short video, we will describe the function and purpose of the prostate gland, the symptoms of the enlarged prostate gland, and what treatment options are available for this common condition. The prostate gland is a walnut-sized organ located at the base of the bladder and surrounds the tube inside the penis called the urethra that transports urine from the bladder to evacuate the body. The prostate gland produces the fluid that mixes with sperm and exits the body as semen at the time of ejaculation and orgasm. When men reach middle age, for reasons not entirely clear, the prostate gland enlarges. As it enlarges, it compresses the urethra, causing symptoms that include increased frequency of urination, urgency of urination, and a decrease in the force and caliber of the urinary stream. Enlargement of the prostate gland is a benign condition and is not to be confused with prostate cancer, which is a malignancy and an entirely different disease. The diagnosis of prostate gland enlargement is made by taking a careful history and physical exam, including a digital rectal exam. A few other tests, such as a urinalysis and a prostate-specific antigen blood test, also referred to as a PSA, are performed to be sure that the symptoms are not due to a urinary tract infection or to prostate cancer. Additionally, a cystoscopy or an ultrasound exam may be ordered. The cystoscopy is a procedure allowing the physician the ability to look into the bladder with a tiny lighted tube to rule out any other conditions that may be present, while an ultrasound exam consists of a small probe placed in the rectum to evaluate the size of the prostate gland. For men who have mild to moderate symptoms, a negative digital rectal exam and a normal PSA test, no treatment may be required although an annual follow-up visit with your doctor is recommended. If treatment is necessary, medication is typically the first step. There are two classes of drugs that are used. The first class is alpha blockers, which relax the muscles in the prostate and the urethra to improve the flow of urine through the urinary tract. The second class, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, block a hormone that actually causes the prostate gland to shrink in size. These drugs are effective, but may lose their effectiveness with time. Other side effects can include a decrease in the volume of the ejaculation and lightheadedness. Minimally invasive procedures include the use of a special catheter inserted through the penis and positions microwave or radio frequency energy next to the prostate tissue to heat the prostate gland and increase the opening in the urethra which will promote the flow of urine from the bladder to evacuate the body. The advantages of the microwave treatment include 1. The procedure can be accomplished in the office or an outpatient setting. 2. The procedure does not require a general anesthetic, but is done with a local anesthetic inserted into the urethra a few minutes before the procedure. 3. The actual procedure takes about 30 minutes. The disadvantages of the microwave procedure include 1. The heat generated by the microwaves causes swelling of the prostate, requiring the use of a catheter for a day or two after the procedure. 2. Large prostate glands or those men with prostate glands that have grown into the bladder cannot be adequately treated with microwave therapy. Surgical therapy includes transurethral resection of the prostate gland, also known as TERP. The TERP has been the standard of care for nearly 50 years. The procedure consists of the insertion of a special instrument that allows visualization of the prostate gland. An electric current is transmitted to a wire that cuts through the prostate tissue to remove the blockage that is causing the symptoms. After the procedure, a catheter is inserted through the penis into the bladder to drain the urine and blood and is usually removed in two to three days. The procedure takes 30 to 60 minutes and requires a spinal or general anesthetic and hospitalization for one to three days and several weeks of restricted activity. One disadvantage of this procedure is that it results in the loss of ejaculation at the time of orgasm. An open surgical procedure is reserved for very large prostate glands. 
This procedure requires hospitalization for three to five days and four to six weeks of recovery before men can resume all activities. In 2003, a new treatment option became available for treating the enlarged prostate gland, known as green light laser therapy. This procedure is performed with a small fiber that is inserted into the urethra through a cystoscope. The fiber delivers high-powered laser energy, which quickly heats up the prostate tissue, causing the tissue to vaporize. This process is continued until all of the enlarged prostate tissue has been removed. Natural urine flow is rapidly restored, and urinary symptoms are quickly relieved in most patients immediately after the procedure. Before green light laser treatment, you may be given medication to help you relax prior to general anesthesia and an antibiotic to help avoid infection. You should speak with your doctor about any medications you are taking, including blood thinners and even aspirin. You will need to avoid eating or drinking after midnight on the day of your procedure. Immediately following the procedure, a catheter is inserted and you will spend some time in the recovery room until the anesthetic wears off and the catheter is removed. In most cases, once you urinate, you will be discharged from the hospital or the ambulatory treatment center without a catheter. Be sure to wear loose, comfortable clothing and make arrangements for a ride home following the procedure. The side effects after the procedure will subside within a few days and may include a small amount of burning on urination frequency of urination, blood in the urine, and it is completely normal to pass some prostate tissue for several days or weeks after the procedure. There is a slight risk of a urinary tract infection, which is easily treated with an antibiotic. Backward ejaculation, where the semen moves into the bladder at the time of orgasm and is then evacuated with the next urination, and although very rare, erectile dysfunction. The green light laser procedure does not affect potency or your erections or ejaculations. Green light laser therapy has been proven effective in 90% of the more than 400,000 men who have received the treatment, and the results last for many years. After the procedure, most men are discharged without a catheter. However, your doctor may choose not to remove the catheter for a few hours or even overnight if there is bleeding if you live a great distance from the hospital, or if you are on certain medications such as blood thinners. Your doctor will discuss the delayed return to some activities, such as bicycle riding, that can irritate the prostate. But in general, once your doctor removes the catheter, you can expect to return to normal activities, including sexual intimacy, in three to four weeks. You can expect an immediate improvement in your urinary symptoms, including the force and caliber of your urinary stream, and less frequency and urgency of urination, resulting in a marked improvement in the overall quality of your life. Prostate enlargement is a common condition that affects most men after age 50. The diagnosis is easily made, and there are several treatment options available. One of those options is the green light laser. For more information, talk to your doctor.